Today I will show you how you can tell which nerve is pinched in your lower back. At the end of the video, I will tell you how to find out if your symptoms are due to sciatica or not. Patients with a pinched nerve in the lower back can develop a pattern of pain, numbness, tingling, sensation of pins and needles, and even weakness of the legs. They may have one or more of these symptoms. This condition is called lumbar radiculopathy. Lumbar means the lower back. Radiculopathy means diseased nerve. In most cases of lumbar radiculopathy, you can get a pretty good idea of which nerve is pinched in the lower back based on the location of the symptoms. For example, let's start with the L5 nerve, which is the most commonly affected nerve in cases of lumbar radiculopathy. The L5 nerve root comes out between the L5 and the S1 vertebrae. It then goes deep inside the pelvis and it exits the pelvis through an opening called the sciatic notch in the buttock. From the buttock, the nerve goes to the outside of the hip, thigh continues beyond the knee, on the outside of the shin, and onto the top of the ankle and foot, ending up in the big toe. So when a patient complains of pain, numbness, tingling at this location, you can be pretty confident that this is a L5 radiculopathy. The second most commonly affected nerve is the S1. The S1 nerve root comes out between the S1 and S2 vertebral segments. This nerve goes deep inside the pelvis and it exits the pelvis through the sciatic notch. From there, it goes directly into the back of the buttock, thigh, calf, heel, and the outside border of the foot. This location is classic for S1 radiculopathy, and these patients may have difficulty with pushing their ankle down. They will also experience significant spasms of the calf along with pain and numbness on the outside border of the foot. Now let's talk about the L4 radiculopathy. The L4 nerve root comes out between the L4 and the L5 vertebrae. This nerve goes deep in the pelvis and it exits the pelvis through the sciatic notch. From there, it goes into the front of the thigh diagonally and crosses the knee into the inside of the shin. Patients with the L4 radiculopathy will have pain, numbness, tingling at these locations. In severe cases, it may also cause foot drop, which means difficulty with pulling up the ankle against resistance. Also, because the L4 nerve powers the quadricep muscle group, patients with the L4 radiculopathy may develop difficulty with going up and down stairs. These features are pretty classic for L4 radiculopathy. Finally, let's talk about the much less common radiculopathy of the L3 nerve. Patients with the L3 radiculopathy typically will have minimal pain in the buttock. Instead, they will have a radiating diagonal pattern of pain, numbness, tingling in the front of the thigh, stopping at the front of the knee. Symptoms will not radiate beyond the knee, which is how you can differentiate it from a L4 radiculopathy. From a clinical standpoint, the most common radiculopathies are those of the L5, followed by the S1, followed by the L4 nerves. The L3 radiculopathy is much less common. So here's the tip. Importantly, the L4, L5, and S1 nerve roots combine together deep in the pelvis to form the sciatic nerve. So radiculopathy of the L4, L5, S1 nerve roots can be called sciatica. On the other hand, since the L3 nerve root is not a part of the sciatic nerve, Therefore, technically speaking, L3 radiculopathy cannot be called sciatica. That is the key difference between the terms radiculopathy and sciatica. Sciatica is just a special subtype of radiculopathy. So I hope you find this information useful. Please share and subscribe to my channel so I can keep making these educational videos for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to share in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing from my viewers. Take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Thank you for watching and see you next time.